Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. How's that for a slice of fried gold? I'm Brendan, here with Luke. Oi. And Jonathan. That's me. And today we're talking about Shaun of the Dead. Uh, and before we get into it, we'll go around as always. Luke, what'd you think? Short and sweet. It's a fun movie. Okay. Jonathan, how much did you hate this movie? I didn't hate it. I thought it was pretty good. I wouldn't really say it was funny, but it was pretty good. This coming from the guy who brought the Lego movie. Um, yeah. yeah. This movie's great. I think, I think this movie's a romp. That's, that's what I'd call this movie. Okay. I don't know. I never, like... I don't I never... There was none, none, none of the jokes, like, super had me smiling. They were all super... Uh, but the Lego movie, movie did... Yeah, because the Lego movie actually had jokes that were trying. This movie just had stuff that like, was super predictable. Nothing like, really surprised me in this movie. Honestly, uh, so after I watched this, I, I rewatched Hot Fuzz, and I was like, ooh, I wonder if Jonathan would actually like Hot Fuzz more. I like Hot Fuzz more. I don't, again, I want to say I didn't dislike this movie, and I didn't think that it was like trying to be funny and failing. I just don't. I would not call this, like, a super funny movie. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a funny movie, but I would call it a fun movie. Yeah, a fun movie. I don't know if I'd say it was, like, funny. I also had a moment where he goes, like, I'm 29, and I'm like, oh, no, I'm 29. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, ugh. And, I mean, this movie probably would have hit me best uh, if I was, like, 22, 23, um, you know, when you have kind of friendships that are similar to, uh, to the main characters. Yeah. Uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. So I, I will say like, I like the Lego movie. Like I didn't find myself laughing at this movie, but again, I've seen this movie a couple times now. So I don't know if it's change in humor or just knowing the jokes, but like, I'm pretty sure I laughed uh... at this movie when I saw it. Originally. I don't know how. Like all of the jokes were super predictable. There was like every joke that I expected to see, I saw, and then like the only joke that had like I don't know, like I, everything was so, so foreseeable. Like the moment his red pen spilt and somebody was like, "You have red on you," I was like, "Oh, they're gonna say well, yeah. the moment he squishes a zombie's head," and it happened. I'm and, not like, saying every it's joke, a. I'm not saying it's a surprising movie. <laughs> every joke was like that, and I think you know, like a lot of horror, people. A lot of people would consider humor to be the unpredictability of uh, some stuff. That's what I was about to say. Like, one of the cores of comedy is, uh, you know, unpredictability. And I just saw every joke coming. And that doesn't mean make the jokes bad, because some of them, like, were executed well. But some of them were just kind of like, ah, yeah, okay. That's fair. I mean, so... I mean, the reason I picked this movie wasn't because it's laugh-out-loud funny anyway. I... I tend to prefer comedies that function as movies as well, which I think this movie is very good about. Yeah. Um, I, I think, think this is a, a movie that just doesn't take itself too seriously. No, of course not. Yeah, is what I would describe it as. I, I don't know if I'd really describe it as a comedy. I think it's a comedy still. I was initially worried this was going to be a parody movie before I first ever saw it. Mm -hmm. um, and it does play with that a little bit. Um, it, it uses uh, it uses some of the sounds from uh, which one is it? I don't remember which zombie. I think it's Dawn of the Dead. It uses it's probably the original Dawn of the Dead. Uh, and then there's the 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 line they yell into the phone: "We're coming to get you, Barbara." It's from Night of the Living Dead, one of the earliest famous zombie movies. Really, really the the first. The, yeah, the first. <laughs> big zombie movie really i i think before that zombies didn't really exist they kind of created night of the living dead the zombies to kind of be like well we can't we don't have the budget for vampires so uh we're gonna create something simpler yeah i i think so i think that's part of the reason why i i love this movie so much is like i was big into zombie stuff for a while like i I saw like all the movies, played a bunch of zombie games. Like I, I love just the concept of the zombie apocalypse as a storytelling um, vehicle, and like this movie, playing at it in a fun way is is very enjoyable. Um, 
and also like it shares jokes with Hot Fuzz, and then you know later uh, the end of the world. Which uh, not having seen the Cornetto trilogy, I guess you don't even get the the callbacks. Which uh, callbacks don't really function as jokes. It's just kind of a nice nod, I suppose. But they're still fun <laughs> in a way. As jokes. Like the the fence scene is in all three movies in different ways. Uh, um <laughs> yeah when the fence falls over you you expected that jonathan i expected him to fail at jumping in some way the fence just falling over is definitely the funniest way like yeah that is, could have like i said like i said um i expected something to happen it did happen but it was executed well but mm -hmm. i did i wasn't like ha, ha i was just like ha yeah okay i always like, forget this was, is the first of the cornetto trilogy the lines, that was along the lines that I expected. I certainly do not. <laughs> yeah, I always think Hot Fuzz came before this for some reason. No, definitely after. But... No, it is after. I just For some reason in my head. I think it's because it's the order I saw them. I think I saw Hot Fuzz first. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like this, this, this movie is really fun i think the uh the cinematography is really good in this movie i think the actual storyboarding and how they set up sean as a parallel to the the zombies early on in the story is is good and and even after well, yeah <laughs> but uh you know I, I think my favorite moment was probably when david got disemboweled david is a bit of a shit he's a cunt <laughs> Really, I was about to say one of the things in this movie that was kind of like, yeah, yeah, is like everybody who was responsible, an asshole. Yeah, I mean, everybody who was responsible was an asshole, but also like everybody who was like an asshole also wasn't like as big of an asshole as I think that they wanted me to see them as. Yeah, like the, I will like say the roommate. the roommate. Yeah, the roommate got the short end of the. Stick. I don't think the roommate's just an asshole. I don't think you're supposed to see him as an asshole. I mean, he. So the scene where he actually gets mad and tells him off, like, he comes off, I guess, a bit asshole. But, like, he's also, like, he's upset because yeah. Ed was being a dick. Yeah, no, I no. think kid me would have been like, oh, Ed's totally in the right. But, like, adult me is definitely no, more like, yeah, oh, no, the, the roommate's totally in the right 100%. Yeah, no, yes. like, I just, him telling off Sean in that way is unnecessary. Where he's like, uh... Because he, he, he calls Sean a loser or whatever and tells him to get his shit together. Like, which Sean needs to get his shit together. But the way he goes about it is more ass than it right, needed to but be. But, like, when he dies, he's like, yeah, and fuck you, and then blows his head off. And it's like, I think you're supposed to be like, yeah, but I was like, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, he, was, he wasn't that bad. And yeah. also, like, even the guy who was, like, pining over Sean's girlfriend, while he was, like, a wimpy dweeb, like, total, like, ugh. Like he was not a good person. He was a negative Nancy. Yeah, but he That's also wasn't. Like, uh, he also wasn't like the worst. Like I don't know. He was. I mean, he, he's he was just right kind of a shithead, ways. and he does fuck things up a couple times. Yeah, he's a shithead who fucks things up a couple times. I don't think that like I didn't feel good when he got his comeuppance. So I was just kind of like, eh, no, yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't I don't think, think any... necessarily he got his like comeuppance in. Story wise, it felt like that was like it was just a nice disembowelment scene, you know. It was nice <laughs> yeah. to see. No, no one's yeah. a and genuine also, villain you, in this movie. That, you like, can't tell me it's funny when, when, uh, when is it Barbara, the mom? No, no, no her, the uh, girlfriend. Who, she takes yeah, the, the girlfriend. Leg. Yeah, the leg. <laughs> he takes the leg oh, off yeah. and is like, "Oh, look, I'm coming for you!" Like, Diane. Dude, he's, that shit's so funny. I don't know. I didn't think that that was that funny. I more thought, like, I thought, I don't know, I guess a, a lot of, maybe I took it a bit too seriously, because the movie, uh, maybe I took it a bit too seriously, but... If you're, if you're going into a comedy movie taking it seriously, you're doing something wrong. No, no, it's, but, like, some things can be funny and make sense. A lot of this, like... I think I for the know. most part it does. I mean, them ripping the leg off absolutely does not make sense. Yeah, and then, like, like I'll find you. It's like, okay, obviously he's dead. I did think it was funny, but I wasn't... I think a lot of it, like, that hindered me was, like, obviously, okay. And she wasn't, like, a stupid character before then. So it was like, okay, this is kind of coming from nowhere. But then also, like, how he totally gets around the zombies when they get cornered. I don't know, it's just like, uh... 
it seemed like a lot of like the stakes the stakes didn't matter when it didn't need to and they kind of played it off as like oh it's not that serious and it's like yeah okay i can get behind that but then it's like hey things are serious the zombies are here now and it's like well they weren't that serious a couple of scenes ago why are they serious now yeah and the thing is ed is literally a piece of shit well so yes so i think the way i see it is like the zombies in left for dead when they're activated they're like way more of a problem so like Maybe. the window scene it's a problem because they know they're in there and they're aggravated the reason they can get around them is because acting like a zombie lets you get through them i mean that's set up from the start of the movie yeah that's why sean lives yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> to an extent i'm not talking about i'm it not talking reminds about me getting the... through the crowd acting like a zombie i'm talking about when he's like hey come over here i'm a meal because now they are activated but then he's yeah, like, he... oh, I, gave him, I gave him the slip. Well, he didn't like, give okay. him the slip, though. He just thinks he yeah. gives him the slip. Yeah, he didn't, sure, he didn't give him but like, the slip. he still didn't get bit. So it's like, how big of a deal are these? Well, yeah, but on an open street, you can outrun a zombie. If it's crashing through the window, grabbing you in an enclosed building, you're it a little more fucked. It depends on the type of zombie. It depends on the type well, of there, zombie. There's no, case, yes. Yeah, there's no runners in Shaun of the Dead. They're just all yeah. shamblers. I will say uh, Dawn of the Dead has some fast zombies. Uh, is is that the mall one? Yeah. Yeah. Those zombies will fuck you up. But I think it's bullshit when they have, like, these zombies can fucking climb walls and shit. Like, not. That happens in the The whole 28 series, right? The zombies just do whatever the fuck they want? Yeah. And they're, like, up on the ceiling and shit. And one one guy gets infected because the zombie is, like, shot from above him. And, like, a little bit of blood hits his eye. I don't know. I I feel like the, the zombies in this are very much, like how zombies kind of would more react if anything yes because zombies zombies... (laughs) no no because they're like they're human uh what do you call it like there's human strength other than when they're ripping off (laughs) david's legs and shit which is funny well i mean the, the whole point of the zombies in this movie is just to be an allegory for people in society like the reason the whole setup happens with sean and why he survives is because like it's essentially a commentary that sean is already a zombie he is shambling from place to place acting out of baser instinct like that's the whole point of the zombies in the movie they're not doing anything fancy because it's just supposed to be like look at these zombies they're people that are lazy essentially that would be <clears throat> Yeah, I, I don't know that this is, like, my favorite zombie movie. I do really enjoy this movie. Yeah, there, there's, some scenes, there's some scenes in this movie that I definitely didn't like. I didn't like the, the record-throwing part. I thought it was funny up until when, like, randomly they had the record collection and were, like, throwing one by one. Like, oh, throw that. Don't throw that. Like, yeah, I wasn't... Wait, that is yeah, the scene, I, though. What do you mean? Yeah, I wasn't. I was no like before that when they're throwing stuff. Well, I just... was like getting a laugh of it, like when they're throwing random shit. Yeah, and then when they're like, "All right, we gotta go get more stuff," and they're like, brought the records down. Well, they brought the records down because one record worked. Yeah, it wasn't it just, just we need to get more stuff. It was hey, this works. I think I get what you're saying, and I kind of agree. It was like, um, I don't know how to really describe it. It's just like. It's not that they took the joke too far, because, I mean, that's sometimes the point, you know, but... Mm-hmm. It, it, it was just a setup to joke about Sean's music taste, which also didn't work necessarily, because some of the albums I did not recognize, and it was like, oh. Yeah, it's like, too, it's like we're not in the demographic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. Because, like, I, I'm sure as as... if we knew those bands, it would play more for, like, when he says, I actually kind of like it. That's probably a band that people don't like and that's the point of it it's yeah just, like you know, in uh like in is it hot fuzz where he's like you know what movie i really like and they're talking about what does that mean it's like a random dumb action movie after they, the, the, the two movies they talk about the most are point break and bad boys 2 yeah point break i think point break's good though is it yeah i don't know man bad boys 2 about, is not good they're talking about bad boys for life like, no, isn't that Bad Boys Three? That's three, yeah. yeah Bad yeah. Boys Two is the one that like killed the series for like ten years. Yeah, <laughs> and then they brought it back to slaughter it. <laughs> yeah, they need someone to buy it. 
Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, like, I I like Edgar Wright as a filmmaker, even when his movies aren't always like. Wait, this was Edgar Wright. Yeah. Huh, okay. Um, I think his cinematography is always really good. Um, because like in a comedy movie, you don't really think about cinematography being the thing that yeah is going to be of note but i think it is noteworthy in this movie but i do think too it's kind of one of his one of his first roles i feel like the cinematography is probably his worst nothing super um, stuck out to me but i wasn't i just think some of the shots are good in this in this i think he gets better he does get better for sure but I, i think it's still good in this movie like baby driver yeah, I mean, obviously. yeah, ooh, that's a good movie. Yeah, this is like uh, it was basically his first. Movie this is his first feature like film. Years. Yeah, I guess he did a fistful of fingers. Um, but it's like a comic. I don't. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um. So yeah, you get this more video shorts, then Hot Fuzz, um, then Scott Pilgrim, World's End, Baby Driver. Yeah, I don't know. I. I Again, I, not the most impressive, but I think it, it was good in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Better than most comedies, for sure. And then obviously he gets better. Actually, honestly, I don't think the cinematography in Hot Fuzz is that noteworthy. I don't know. Some of the scenes around the church I really liked. What was a scene in this movie that stood out to you that you think is noteworthy? Um, I'm trying to think of one, and I can't. Like, Nothing really comes to mind. I like the long shot of him going to the shop and then mirrored again when everything is gone to shit and he's okay. tracing the same thing. Um, what else is there? I, I don't know. I, I did it bad and watched this movie several days ago instead of the night before like I normally do. Yeah, I did the same thing. So. And it has evacuated my mind um, in a lot of ways. Just let me just do a quick Google of scenes in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is high quality content. The hell right yeah, here. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's the shot at night where the they're like first encountering a zombie that's like shambling in the darkness, and it's like it's all in shadow with them two splitting the frame and the zombie in the center. I can send you the picture I'm looking at again is not a good podcast medium <laughs> um like look here we go this article perfectly encapsulates things it has some good shots in it um also i, I do really love in this movie that uh all the near misses of sean figuring out what's going on <laughs> because he's yeah. just like he yeah, just doesn't he opens care the door yeah. and there's just blood hands on everything like there's so many times where he should figure out what's going on and he just isn't paying attention. That's um, part of it. He's already a zombie. Yeah. I, th- I thought that was good. Because like that's not, again not really a thing that happens in zombie movies, right? Like somebody just He doesn't get it. Usually they see the evidence and they're like, Oh, I'm sure that's fine. Which is absurd. Um I also like this is sort of a minor thing, but it's a thing I hate about zombie media. The the lack of acknowledgement of zombies. Like, every zombie media takes place in a world where zombies were never thought of. Even if it's yeah. like a one-to-one hour world, zombies just don't exist. Which, like, in this movie, they're like, yeah, we're not saying the Z word, but zombies clearly exist. Everything else is like, oh, we're calling them... Uh, we're calling the them. Dead. We're calling them the shamblers. They're that was who one knows joke that what I this did is. Very funny. The walkers. Yeah, that was one joke I actually thought was like very good. But not calling them the Z word. Yeah, when they're like, "No, nah, that's goofy." <laughs> what do you want me to call? It? I don't know. <laughs> that was that was a good joke. Yeah, it it always bothers me when like zombie media does not acknowledge that zombies exist because it's like that's fine for like early zombie properties. But now, zombies fucking exist. <laughs> Clearly. They've been around for a while. Yeah, not, a, not a new concept. Zombies. Like, can you imagine a vampire movie where they're like, 
what do babies. We, what do we call this thing? It's mm-hmm. never before heard of. Like, imagine Twilight, where they're like, "So you're a." I think that's what they you're did. You're a bat at one creature. Time. No, doesn't she say explicitly like, "So you're a vampire"? I think she she says, "So what are you?" or something. Yeah, but he answers like, "The I'm a fucking." Yeah, uh, like vampires exist. Like vampire. I'm. I mean, at the same time, they don't really Wait, like. Wait, that scene, he's like, "I know what you are," and she, and then he's like, "Say it," and she's like, "You're a vampire." Yeah. So she's yeah. literally saying like what he is. So yeah. I don't know. I I think it's goofy though because like. His traits are like not. I don't know. In that movie, I mean, other than sparkling, not... everything else exists as a normal vampire shit in that movie. What do you think of the sparkling, though? <sighs> we don't need to get into the sparkling. This is not a Twilight <laughs> episode. <laughs> That'd be a comedy, huh? That, but it would be a tragedy. I might get more laughs. Maybe. Ooh. Um. Where was I going? We were talking about cinematography. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like Edgar Wright as a filmmaker. Um, I, I don't think Baby Driver is the best movie ever, but it's, again, cinematography is pretty impressive. Hmm. He also, in all of his movies, like he, he put stuff to the beat of songs, which is great. Uh, always love that. Yeah. Which is actually, like that's, where queen, he, yeah. that's where he got his, uh, I think there's his first breakout was that music video, right? I don't know. Blue, sure. blue song. So the the scene in Baby Driver, where he's yeah. uh, I think the, he's, the one where he's listening to Bell Bottoms. That scene comes from a music video he did with Noel Fielding, in a car. Listening to I believe Blue Song. Well, I thought that he uh, like this was always that was always a scene that he wanted to make, but he never got around to. No, his 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 like. I think the thing that really like put him on the map was uh Okay, never mind then. Was basically that scene. I think he wanted to do it in a feature film, but he had he had done it. He had oh, okay. I thought the story was that he uh he always wanted to maybe that was it, was he just wanted to do the whole shebang and he only did the one scene. Yeah. And this is uh this is right before Shaun of the Dead when he does this. Interesting. Oh three. Oh two, oh three, something like that. Um So you guys seem to really dig the uh the hidden commentary of like him being zombie like already. That totally went over my head. Oh really? I mean look yeah. at the way he's like walking at the beginning when he gets yeah, out. Yeah, I I don't know. And, I just thought he the... was I mean I get that he was a dude that was down bad. I don't know if I would have described him as zombie like. Maybe I'm just not big brained, but I don't know that I just didn't make that connection. That was something the movie was trying to go for. Yeah, I think it's I definitely intentional. That, yeah, I, I think so too. Now that you pointed out, I feel like kind of foolish for not seeing it, but I just kind of wanted to point that out. That I, I don't know. I think that you're right that there's more to like dig into with it, but and also, I did pick up. I did pick up like that was why he wasn't getting. Like, why they weren't attacking him was because he was zombie-like, but I didn't get that, like, that was sort of the point, was that, like, the social commentary of it, I just was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, also because everything goes to shit for Sean when he decides to get his life together. <laughs> Which, as well, it often really does, like, in, in real life, when you get your shit together, it's a fucking mm-hmm. monumental task where you feel like, what the fuck? Well, okay. he didn't super decide to get his shit together exactly yet. Because, you know, he was still yelled at for not having his shit together. Well, sure, but if he if he had just stayed in with Ed and did the same shit he had always done, like, sure, his mom still would have died, but, like, pretty much everything else probably would have been fine. Which, that's the call to action when he gets that phone call, you know? Yeah. Also, uh, if, if another he's... good joke. Another good joke was like, oh, "You've been bit." No, it was your your father. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, this movie has fun. some jokes. Yeah, a couple, a couple. Um, another uh, another repeat actor as well, Bill Nye. Yeah. Yep. It was interesting to see him as an asshole father instead of a good father. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's also he's in Hot Fuzz because the the Cornetto trilogy kind of acts as like an anthology, so there's a lot of the same actors in it for the greater good. For the greater good. Um, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost are obviously in all of them. Martin Freeman's in all three. Uh, he has two minor roles in Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, and then he has a major role in uh, The End of the World. 
Bill Nighy is in this one in Hot Fuzz. I don't think he's in the end of the world, but I could be wrong. I don't know. It is what it is. But yeah. Wanted to call out we had a we had another friend return to us. Wow. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome to the team. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, in terms of performances in this movie, I think everybody's fine. Um, Nobody was really standout, I would say. Yeah, no But one. no one's, like, doing a bad job either. For sure. Um, I would have loved to see more Peter Serafinovitz, but, you know, they had to kill Pete. You hate to see it. Yeah. I mean, I guess the roommate character wasn't that interesting. But at least he seemed to want Sean to succeed in life. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah. think it would have actually been kind of interesting to have him be like a because he like a supportive antagonistic force. Like imagine imagine if he lived. But you can't have like anyone competent every... go with them. Well, yeah. like here's the thing: if you like have him at every turn be like Ed's a fucking idiot, then he's like Nah, Ed is fine. It might have served to like even further show like how. Um, I don't want to say like toxic their friendship is, but how draining maybe. Yeah, I mean you still get there in the end. Sean still yells at him and says like every like uh, outside the bar actually when he yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. answers the phone. Goofy, yeah, that was a little insane. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think you 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 can't have anyone competent go with them. Like that's why Philip has to die, but Pete has to die. Oh, also, all of the plans in this movie make absolutely no sense. And I'm sure that that was yeah, kind that's, of... That's but, hey, intentional, yeah. is that they just wanted to go... <laughs> Ed, Ed just wants to go to the bar. and Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. For the Winchester. Yeah. And also, again, it's, it's playing with the start of the movie, where Liz essentially never wants to set foot in the bar again, yeah. and the bar is what allows them to survive. But well, does it though? Well, does it really? Yeah, let's, uh... I feel like they all would have been better. Had well, it's what allows her to survive. <laughs> I, is it though? It, it's unclear. Yeah, she does live. It, she it, lives. Because but... it's hard to make a case of whether or not their apartment would have gotten really overrun. Don't... Like you can't really like you can't. She was like on a higher floor. I guess they could. Have there were a lot of zombies them. outside though, and if you get How to the point, they've gone inside. They've humans. Yeah, but if they they're get inside. Water. Like, okay. where, where are they going to go? They're going to jump out of a fifth floor window or whatever? How are they going to get inside from maybe a window and then all of the zombies are going to go to that one apartment? I don't know. It seems unlikely. I mean, we have shown that zombies can just break the windows and then get in from it. That happens multiple yeah, but, times in the but, movie. But, like, that, how would they have known that there's people in that specific apartment? Well, usually zombies is... are, like, aware of people, right? I don't know it, if it's depends like... on, it depends on the medium. Yeah, but that's fair. This is this maybe this fed into like why I didn't think that um the guy who was like who who was like a bit of a a bit of an ass. I thought he was just that, like a bit of an ass, because I do think he was right. Like had they just stayed, probably would have been better. Yeah, probably. It's hard to say also, though, because like also like they were like, Yeah, let's just go take this we'll take my dad's car who's turning into a zombie right now this is definitely better yeah. than you staying there but yeah i don't know i mean you can't really judge that too much because that was like a vessel for the jokes mm -hmm. but um i don't know it, it it's a shame because this movie almost completely stands together on its own and i think that just moments like that takes away from the best part of it almost because i don't think the best part of it was its jokes i don't think you can was... have a zombie movie without bad logic i'm not I sure what, i'm not sure one of those exists yeah. <laughs> that's fair actually that would be a really good idea for a movie try to make a zombie movie where people act extremely rationally but it's still not enough i would love to see a zombie movie where there isn't a scene where somebody gets bit and that gets revealed later yeah true that's also always super predictable. Uh, yeah, never like I know it. it's 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 the thing because of the nature of the bite in zombie movies. Like that is obviously a very obvious thing to do to set up a conflict. But like, fuck me, it's in every single zombie movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I kind of like I don't know I do like some aspects of it. Like I like the drama of like there's a very real. Uh, you feel for people like in a moment when it's like oh my god somebody I love 
is going to die. They're not dead yet. It's almost like it's almost like expedient Alzheimer's. Sure, but it's it's also you get it's, all of that tragedy. In it's one. better when they take the trope that exists and flip it in some way. Like I think, no, I is it Last of Us? I'm gonna spoil Last of Us real quick. <laughs> I Which think it's one? Last of Us. The first one. I haven't played the second one. It might not even be Last of Us. It's something... Somebody gets bit, and they find out, and you get to the whole conflict scene of, oh my god, this person's bit, you lied to us, holy shit, they're gonna turn, we're all gonna die. And it's revealed, no, this person got bit weeks ago. They are immune to the virus. That's better. You get your conflict, you get your scene, and it's different. I have a better one, and this is probably what I would do if I was making the movie right. The character... Um, reveals or like somehow it gets like found out like oh they've been bit and another character just walks up shoots him in the fucking head and half of the people agree with them the other half are just like holy shit but don't really say anything and they just go about their business because that's more realistically what would happen yeah and it that's like it just like Okay, that's over. And it would be making fun of the trope of like, I was bit, and then like later have them come back as a zombie. Like, or no, just, just in your if you're in a secure area that you've barricaded off from the zombies, and your whole plan is to survive in this area, maybe fucking scream the people you let in to make sure they aren't bitten. Because mm-hmm. I think that's what you would do in an actual scenario. You wouldn't just let every random stranger in to just roam about willy nilly. You'd be like, hey. Yeah, we need to check movie, you for bites. At the end of the movie, when the government sweeps in, I kind of feel like they would have just been shot because they look like zombies. They look like hell at the end there. Sean and... Uh, I, I, I think they girl. would definitely be uh, taken in and interrogated. Well, for sure. But they also looked like zombies, and there's no way to tell. I feel like they would have been... Yeah, probably. Ratatatad. Ratatatad. But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really have anything else to say. Um, probably not too much more to say, but there are probably some things if anybody. I'm has just saying, anything. I personally don't. If you have something to say, say it. <laughs> I'm interested to see if I missed anything else. Was there any other like overarching themes that you thought were super noteworthy, really good? Um, I, I the big one is definitely Sean as a. As a zombie, and then the callbacks to other zombie films, which actually, I don't know, how many zombie films had you had you seen? Me? Yeah. Um, Not like an exceptional amount, but not like none. I don't mm-hmm. know. That doesn't tell you anything. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I tried. I, I do also like the, like, it's, it's another thing he does in um, Hot Fuzz, and I don't remember if it happens in The End of the World. He basically explicitly tells you what's going to happen in the movie before it ever happens and then it happens Hmm. no Um, surprises here boy that would be sometimes yeah i don't know i i i like a lot of the technical stuff in this uh this movie there's also there's a lot of repeat lines that change their emphasis or meaning depending on the context of the situation which i think is fun which one other than you have read on you uh we're surviving shows up a couple times okay um what else is there i i know there are a couple more but yeah i'm not thinking of them Hmm. that's cool Shows like a good writer. Yeah, he he's really good at planning out his movies in a way that I think is important. Oh, uh, one thing I will say about this movie that was a negative. Didn't remember uh, dropping the n bomb in this movie. Oh, oh, I wanted to make a note of that. That was like super awful. <laughs> yeah, I was I was listening and I paused the movie and I was like, surely not. And I rewound and turned on closed captioning. I was like, oh. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I mean, for the time, I mean, it's not like it was a hard R. I'm pretty sure if it was a hard R, they, they, it would have gotten a lot more fucking flack. 
I just, uh, it was just wild. Not, I look at the lens of when the movie was made and no hard R. It's, it's not horrible. But it definitely shows, again, that Ed's kind of a piece of shit. That's, yeah. I don't know if that's the intention of it. Well, it's but... crazy that no one in the scene reacts, because, I guess, of the time. No, was... at that time, like, everybody said that to an extent. <laughs> like, just not to... saying everybody did, but, you know. It's wild. It was a popular thing to say on TV and elsewhere. I don't, I don't remember that. You remember that. Kids at school would like greet each other like that, like, "Yeah, what's up?" No way. Yes, absolutely. Huh. Yeah. Huh. That's how it be or was, if you will. That's how it been. Yeah, they don't know how it was, but that's how it been. Oh, another scene that's good. Now that I'm thinking about the cast, uh. When he sees his friend and the two groups pass each other, how they're mirrors of each other. Oh, that was super, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, mean, that I was don't know, I, that's been done before. In other, I know probably this movie did it first, but like I remember seeing that like Harold and Kumar. And... It's, still, it's still just like a quick fun scene. Yeah, it was, that's like another fun scene, but like it didn't cross the boundary to funny for me. Oh, no, I don't, of... I don't think that scene ever gets a I think, laugh. I think Ed and the other kid I think it was going close to. Uh... Like, I think done. that's the only part that's funny. The other, like, everyone else, you're just kind of like, oh, they're similar. Yeah. I, I think you add. could have played that for jokes if the groups, like, actually interacted with one another ever. Rather than just yeah, say, it's like, they, that was the, like, only moment they saw each other, and then till the end. Like, it was just kind of a waste, yeah. almost. Well, I mean, they do come back to save them. Only, only she them. does. Yeah, everyone else is gone. We don't see them. Which yeah. is also another reason why I think it was kind of a waste. It yeah. was like... And I, I assume they're all dead, too. Well, also, there's the whole thing of, like, oh, you guys are still together, even though you said you broke up. Like, she, you can tell she, like, she had feelings. Like, they were probably going to be, like, rebounding one another, if you will. Yeah. I assume, uh, I assume like, her whole group dies, too, because she says, how are you guys? And they say, surviving. She says, glad someone did. Right. Yeah. yeah. But she's wearing, like, you know, a more, like, camo, military-esque yeah uh stuff at that point also i thought it was weird that they brought her back for that because like at that point in the story she really didn't serve much of a purpose i mean her purpose was kind of to be like oh you guys are together but like she's she's clearly seen as like a nice person and would would have been maybe even a better no, no, fit I, for I, sean which is weird i get that i don't know if i agree about the better fit thing but like I mean, I don't disagree. I just, I don't think that the relationship was really one way or the other, I guess. But I, I, I don't know. I just thought, like, I don't know. It was, it was just sort of just kind of happened. Like, there's really vibe. no. It, yeah, it, it definitely wasn't there. necessary, but. Yeah. I like to see it bring back some action. I think if, if nothing else, it's a sort of subconscious of, like, getting back to familiarity, like seeing a friendly face again. This is all ending. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. Do we want to get to the business of scoring? Does anybody have anything else? I'm glad you pointed out all that stuff, but yeah, no. I, I think, think we're I think we're ready. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a well made movie, even if it's not the funniest. Sure. I agree. Um Luke, what you got? What's the score? Between seven and eight, and I think Jonathan did bring up a few things. Uh, probably, probably a seven. Okay, John. You were right. It's a six. <laughs> I knew it. I could hear it in your voice. <laughs> but I did like it more than I think you thought I did. I think you think my six is worse than it is. No, no, I could just hear it in your voice. It was a six. I was close to giving it a seven, but I do think it's a six. Uh, this is like an eight for me. It, it's not really a, a nine, ten. Like, could watch it, head and feed until the end of time. But I could watch this movie a lot. I like this movie. I think Hot Fuzz has more going for it. I think they're both very good. I like them both better than uh, The End of the World. Yeah, I haven't seen that one, so it'd be like that. So the aggregate score on this one is a 7. Pretty good. I mean, it's, 
It's a seven. And then I, I now realize just how many sevens I've scored. Yeah, we give a lot of sevens here. Yeah. Do I? I, mean, I give a lot I of do. eights, actually. Jonathan's given one seven. Yeah, that's true. I give a lot of eights. Jonathan gives quite a few yeah. eights as well. I'm a, I think I'm a I seven also, kind of guy. I also give a lot of nines. Yeah, you're you're rocking the eight and nines. Yeah, you you really do pass our pass around nines like no one's business. I've liked a lot of the movies. And if you don't like a movie, you're more likely to hate it. Luke's never given a nine. That's fair. Can't catch him giving a nine. I do not yeah. give very many um, middle ground scores. I've been very divisive on every movie we've been over, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of a few. Oh. Uh. Luke, you got a movie picked for next week? Uh, I I I have a movie and I have a show. And we can discuss it. Okay, so are you doing the comedy thing Jonathan requested? I can do a comedy, but it's not going to be a comedy you will be happy to watch. Me? Yeah. Is this a movie I've seen and I don't like? I don't know. I know you don't like the vibes or something. We've talked about it before, but it's what, definitely if we're watching. What is it? The other guys. Oh fuck! I love that movie. It's by far my favorite comedy. It has some jokes in it that are good, but it... it's it's a case where I find both of the leads insufferable. Fair enough. I still find it to be a bop. Like the jokes that I like are not them. It's the side characters. Sometimes that's okay. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the whole point of the movie. But... Like, Aim for the Bushes is so fucking stupid, but I find it funny. But yeah. And then, that, if, then if we're they comedy, never show up again. Um, but that's, was they, that... they don't. <laughs> was that your we movie? don't have to go into the movie, yeah, yeah. though. Uh, was that your movie pick, or did you have a different movie pick? Unless, unless you want to allow me to pick Loki. Well, not for the week. Maybe okay. for your next okay. pick. Like in advance. Well, well, yeah, you you have to put it in now. You have to decide if yeah, you're you got to lock Loki. it in for your next pick so we have time to watch it. Not that it has like a lot of episodes, but just to yeah. make okay. sure there's ample time. All right, sure, yeah. All right. I'll do it. And that'll be our first TV show unless like Brennan wants to do a TV show. Or, or, or no, if Jonathan wants to do a TV show. I do have I some TV like, shows that I think would be cool to watch. but I feel like you got to lock it in. Like you got to give two picks if you're going to do a TV show. Listen, if it's a, if I it's like, like a, rule. can we make that a rule? If it's a mini series, I think. Yeah, no. I mean, it's not. It's not like I'm asking you to watch the entirety of Game of Thrones or something. Like, sure, but like, what if I'm like Invincible next week? Like, that's still an entire show. I could easily. Well, that's what I mean by mini series, like a six episode series. Yeah, Invincible is what? It's thirty minutes, and there's ten episodes. Is oh, there are right? like thirteen. I don't think there's that many. Yeah, it's not it's not a insurmountable. Like it, if it starts to get into like fucking five plus, like all things considered. Oh yeah, it's got eight. So episodes. Here, here's here's the thing about Loki. Um, it's a forty two minute eight episode, so it's about six hours. Yeah, six hours. Even six hours though, for because I know I can watch one and then. Is that like, what chill. Loki is? Six episodes, one hour. Uh, it's six episodes, and then some of them say like fifty is the longest. Some of them say forty. But there is literally eight minutes of skippable content at the beginning and at the end where it's like a okay. three minute intro and a, like a Same six minute everybody. outro. Hmm? Same as every other yeah, show. Yeah, but like they include it in the runtime, which I don't like. A lot every, of the other. Every show does that. Loki mm -hmm. is probably five or six hours of content, I would say. Yeah, it's, I'd say it's around me personally. I'd say having what? Uh, 440 probably. It's less than you think. I don't know if that's how time works. <laughs> it is because a lot of it is just outro. Like the outro is almost 10 minutes long per episode, per fucking episode. Have you seen the other guys, Jonathan? Uh, no. Oh. Good, good. I haven't seen a lot of the movies that you guys have seen, which I'm very happy that we're yeah, doing that's, this. That's I good. like, I love movies and I also like, I feel like you guys have shown me a lot of good movies. So. The other guys is a comedy that I can watch again and again, and it's 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 a, I'm not gonna lie, it's a. It, well, I won't say anything. It, let's just yeah. If it's you give the other lie. guys a ten next week, I'm gonna burn your house down. 
<laughs> it, it's between right now having what I remember. It's between a nine and a ten. I'll tell you that right now. It will be. It will be untenable to me if you give the first and second ten, and the second ten of this goddamn podcast is the other guys. Well, then you're gonna have to give it a lower score if you really care that much. But I'm just <laughs> like, this is this is how I feel. I love it. It's like, I, it's a fucking. It's it's funny. I I think it's funny. Anyway, I guess we're watching the other guys next week. <laughs> um. I, I don't I don't know if this is the thing we want to do on podcast or off podcast. I want to talk about the the other show idea. Well, I kind of want to take a piss. How about off? Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. We'll talk about off podcast. Um, right. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Have one of those days. Have a better day than one of those days.